All right, so I'm here at Rapid TCT looking at a bunch of different 3D printers. One of those is provided by Rapidia. Yeah, so we're printing metal, uh, kind of in a FDM-like process, but it's a little bit different. We extrude a paste, basically, to build up a part, and then we just have to dry it. And what that allows us to do is skip the whole step where if you were printing a filament loaded with metal, you have to get rid of all that polymer. So when we evaporate the water, we're like already done what's called the debinding step. Oh, wow. And so it, we have 99% metal at that point, but there's still gaps between the particles. Mm -hmm. So then when you go into sintering, the particles are like, you know, touching and they start to fuse together. And then at the sintering temperature, it fully densifies into like 98 to 99% the density you'd get from like a uh, rock metal. What are some of the uh, different materials that you're able to print with? On this table is, is actually our like in development or in beta materials. Um, so we have Inconel 625, which is a, a nickel alloy used for high temperature applications in really high corrosive environments. Pretty new development for us is cemented tungsten carbide. So this is the, what they make like end mills and stuff out of, but this is used for its really high hardness and abrasion resistance. And then over here we have copper and it's great for thermal and electrical conductivity. Okay, so we've got another table of goodies over here. So what can you tell me about all these parts on display? So I'm gonna start with this one because it sort of explains the process the best. Okay. So this is a green part. This has not been sintered yet. And you can see here, the white is the evaporative support material. And that's allowing us to print like a full overhang and all sorts of shapes because the paste does not bridge as well as an FDM filament. But then also in here, you can see part of the support are these metal parts. And that's because in sintering, the stiffness of metal is about like warm plasticine. It's, it's like almost at its melting point, so it's really soft. But normally something like this, it would, this would just like sag under gravity. And so we put those metal pieces in with it and they shrink with the whole thing at wow. the same rate wow. and they support it all the way through the shrinkage. And then afterwards you have your raft that looks like this. It has the metal tower still that supported it and all the white area is gone. The white area also acts as a release layer. So between the raft and the part, if you had no, no like separation layer, it would just basically weld together at okay. those temperatures. But it has a little bit of ceramic powder in it that prevents them from bonding. You might want to use our heat treating cycle, which is another option in our sintering furnace. You can heat treat afterwards. Okay. And so that brings the material properties up. So why wouldn't you heat treat? Like it seems like it's just a, uh, just makes the part better. It sort of changes it. You get higher hardness, but less ductility. This is kind of an example of sort of the largest part we printed. Keep in mind that it shrinks about 15% in every dimension. The challenge with going bigger is with sintering actually, not with printing. You get some deformation and with such a large part, the shrinkage can, can make it really challenging. So you try to stick to like medium, small size parts, it looks yeah, like. Yeah, this is like an ideal size. All right, so we've got a bunch of tubes here. Uh, are these the materials that you print with? Yep, so this is how they come. They're in a cartridge, uh, it's about a uh, thousand cc of material. Standard stainless steels, we got 316L here, 17.4. So 316L is like really good for corrosion resistance. 17.4 has less corrosion resistance, although it's still stainless, but it's a much stronger alloy. And then Inconel 625, that's that nickel alloy that's really, really corrosion resistant and uh, has great mechanical properties at high temperatures. And then our beta materials here, copper, and cemented tungsten carbide. I thought these were just for show, but I tried to pick one of these up and they're quite heavy. So are these filled with the, the paste that you use? Yeah. So oh man, this one's <laughs> right. incredibly this, heavy. The support one is way less heavy, but okay. uh, yeah, 316L, that's about you know 12 pounds of, of metal in there. So how much water is mixed in with the paste? By volume, it's about uh, nine to 10% water and then 90% metal. Wow, that's a pretty dense uh, uh, fraction there. Is there any issues where, like, if you let this sit for too long, then the metal powders will settle out, or do you have some way to prevent that from happening? No, so there's a little bit of additives in there as well that, okay. that provide the, the binding that's needed to survive a sintering run okay. and um, to keep it stable. So uh, that's probably the secret sauce that we can't talk about totally. on camera. Yes, that's, <laughs> that is where our IP is. Well, let's go take a look at the actual printer here. We've got one running. Yeah, so the paste cartridge is pressurized from a pump below, and that feeds just a constant stream of paste to the extruder head. Um, the extruder head is where all the like careful dosing and metering of the paste happens. This machine looks very approachable if you've ever worked with a desktop FDM printer. It looks like it's using a lot of the same belts and motion components. Yeah, for sure. It's like uh, the foundation is an IDEX printer 
So this will be my next Ender 3 mod, I think. All right. It's a room temperature process, though, so that like the hot end is not hot. The bed is heated a little bit just to help with the evaporation of the water. Just behind the extruder there is that silver shield. Behind that is a heat lamp. So after each layer is deposited, the heat lamp passes over to dry out the paste a bit. We'll see that in a sec, but I'll have to close the door because it's very bright. The lamp is just putting a bit of heat into the top layer, the most recently printed layer, to help dry out the, the paste on that layer. So then once the water is out of it, it's just metal powder held together with a tiny amount of binder. Uh, yeah, that's a really clever process because now all the layers underneath the one that you're printing are you know, relatively strong yeah. and you won't have to worry about it collapsing. Yeah, and then because there's so little binder, we take the part when it's done and put it directly into the sintering furnace. All right, so once you're done with your print, I guess you'll take that out of the printer and then you've got this large uh, bank vault looking thing. Yeah, so you open the submarine hatch here. All right. um, so this is the sintering furnace. You put your parts in there and it's under vacuum. It's about one tenth of atmospheric pressure and a little bit of argon flows through it so that you don't oxidize all your metal. So it goes up to about 1400 Celsius and um, that allows the parts to densify fully into metal. You can see all our cycles here. Um, we have the sintering cycles for each material and then like the heat treating cycle or you can anneal some materials. If you want to do furnace brazing, you could actually do that in here as well. That's okay. a nice touch screen too. So, uh, <laughs> uh, so wow. this is how the door opens. This is just a demo furnace, but it gives you an idea of the size. Right. And so the parts go on these ceramic setters to uh, get sintered. All right. So how big of a part can you make and cure uh, using your systems? As big as would fit in here, and if you wanted, you could put just one shelf okay. and then have a taller part. Right, uh, but you can have it be relatively long there, it looks for like, sure. too. Yeah. All right, so now we're here at this table, and I just rode in on a Rapidia scooter. So I guess they are using this as a showcase to show off how you can make all sorts of different structural parts. And they're nice and strong and can support my uh, substantial weight. So uh, let's talk about what we've got on the table over here. So what's so interesting over here are some finished parts that after sintering they've been finished a bit. And so here this is done, this polishing is done by what's called isotropic super finishing. I think it's like a chemical and abrasive bath basically. Um, so you get really shiny, high polish. I think it's used in um, food industry a lot. I mean, that sounds like some techno jargon. Hyper, hyper, uh, what? I, isotropic super finishing. Whoever came up with that naming is a genius. Totally, yeah. This cube just shows a few different ways of processing for the finish as well. So one thing you can do is actually sand it while it's still green. It's really soft. Okay, and, wow. And uh, makes it really easy. Nice. You just. Well, I like people do with FDM prints, like sand to finish them, right. but it's, it's even softer than well, a plastic print at this stage. I've actually done a lot of ceramic and clay work in my days, okay. so uh, you, you, that's definitely something that you do in that process. You'll, you'll make a rough shape, and then once it's roughly dried, you can just smooth it out and get yeah. a really good surface finish. And then you fire it and it becomes really hard. So you can't really sand it as easily at that point, but you know. Yeah, there's a, like a lot of parallels with ceramics between any sort of bound metal and sinter-based metal process. Do you ever have someone just take a, a big glob of it and like throw it on a potter's wheel and? We've tried this. So the consistency of our metal paste is a little bit different than ceramic. It makes it hard. Yeah. We've tried making like a drier one so that it holds its shape a bit more, but didn't have a lot of luck, sadly. And the density, like if you try to make any type of angle, it's just gonna collapse. Because so. it, Yeah, it's so heavy, right. right. Um, and then here, there's another way of uh, doing the, the green finishing is with water, because we're using a water-based paste. If you just have like a slightly wet brush and you paint it, you can smooth it that way as well. Or you can wet two surfaces and stick them together and you, you bonded multiple prints that then if you center afterwards, they are fully fused. Right. Like, like fully welded together. And what kind of safety equipment do you have to use when processing parts like this? If you're sanding a bunch, you should wear breathing protection, like any sort of sanding. If you're making dust, it's no good. But in terms of like gloves and, uh, and that kind of stuff? Do you uh, so with the stainless steels, it's pretty safe. Um, with the cemented carbide, it has like cobalt in it pure cobalt and probably a good idea to wear gloves around th those sorts of metals. I want to give a huge thanks to Skylar for having me over at the Rapidia booth. It's a really interesting technology and I hope we've all learned a little bit about this wonderful process. Yeah, thanks for stopping by. Um, yeah, it was great talking to you and uh, you know, just to sort of drive home the story about metal, here's a tool. 
All right, that works as a real metal tool. So it seems like he's got an ax to grind with me, but we'll <laughs> see this in a future video. All right, thanks everyone, and then we'll see you in the next one.